Sure. Okay. So um, let's begin. Uh, we have Mr. Sudeep Singh with us. He's amongst the most enterprising and inspiring leaders in India today. Mr. Singh, welcome aboard. And thank, thank you, you for doing this for us. Awesome. Uh, and thank you to Trinity Schools uh, for having me aboard and starting this uh, wonderful uh, series, uh, especially with uh, my story and you know, a great topic, which is entrepreneurship. So thank you so and much you for having you. me. You're quite an inspiration to a lot of youngsters. And that was the reason we needed you to start this whole series. We, this is a series of uh, inspiring talks called Inspiration 2020. And we were very keen to have you, you know, give your piece of advice to children, youngsters, even um, you know, very passionate entrepreneurs. So thank you. So um, we look forward actually to listening to your journey, of course. And we have, uh, since we ran this ad campaign, we have had a lot of questions that have poured in. Sure. But first, I need you to speak about your journey. Would you just please introduce yourself and a little bit about your journey? Sure. So uh, I uh, am an ex-investment banker. Uh, spent about uh, good. Uh, 12, 13 years in uh, the corporate world across the globe. Uh, before I started out, I wanted to you know, get into entrepreneurship. I always wanted to become an entrepreneur. But uh, it wasn't so easy because uh, you know, uh, things are done differently at every uh, different given point, points in time. Uh, so for me, it, it has been a very, very um, uh, roller coaster ride through the entrepreneurship. Uh, but it's taught me a lot. And I think, you know, that's something I, I reckon with when I read that, you know, uh, tough times don't last, tough people do. So I think that's, that's, that's exactly for entrepreneurship uh, and entrepreneurs who, who are want to be, be aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, so I would definitely stick to that uh, quote. And uh, so uh, my journey started when I came back from the U.S. Um, in the last meltdown, the global meltdown that happened. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, not get into a job anymore, not get into the corporate world anymore. So, and I wanted to do, get into entrepreneurship. So there was a big challenge for me initially because, uh, you know, the word startup or an entrepreneur uh, has evolved over a period of time. Uh, so though I come from a business family, my, my uh, father would understand being into business, but he wouldn't understand you know, being an entrepreneur. So uh, I started my journey from that aspect where, you know, uh, I had to first convince my, my uh, folks at home uh, what is entrepreneurship and what is startup uh, and what I'm trying to do. Uh, that, but, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you short, but that is a very interesting question. I heard you. Business and entrepreneurship. So these two are different. Could you, could you tell us the difference? What is the difference of of being a businessman and being an entrepreneur? Very big question. So uh, I would say that, you know, uh, the, the, the major difference is uh, business people uh, would not like to innovate. I see uh, entrepreneurs would like to innovate. Uh, whether it's a simple business model, whether, whether it's a you know, simple tweak uh, in the industry. So for, to give you an example, uh, you know, people have been selling goods uh, offline for, you know, so many years. Uh, Flipkart came in and changed it all. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest innovations that Flipkart did uh, was, you know, cash and delivery. So it kind of, you know, that changed the entire e-commerce game for India because that was a really, really big innovation. Uh, and how to manage the logistics and the supply chain to manage cash, uh, because India being a touch and feel industry and you know the cash uh, generating industry, we have you know a cash economy as well. Uh, how they brought about that innovation is is fairly fantastic. Uh, so that's where you know uh, innovations come in. Entrepreneurs would see an opportunity where they would want to, you, they see a gap in, in the market, uh, it, it, whichever way they are, you know, whichever market domain that they're targeting, and they, you know, address that gap with some innovation. Vis-a-vis uh, -a, -vis a businessman would, would typically get into, you know, the normal 
uh, businesses that have been been done. But it's over, the way. Yeah, it's 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 predictable, um, and I think entrepreneurship is completely the opposite. Mr. Singh, tell us what inspired you to be an entrepreneur. Something, some personality, some body, some incident. Was there anything that inspired you to walk this path? See, the only thing that inspired me was that uh, when I thought to myself that, you know, I can make, um, why should I make money for some corporation when I make, can, you know, do the same for myself? Uh, that was the biggest I'm sure a lot of my young students think the same. Yes, uh, and I think that's uh, that's uh, the way to think today. Uh, India needs a lot more entrepreneurs, uh, and we need a lot more, you know, sophisticated entrepreneurs. Uh, when I say sophistication, entrepreneur as a journey is not about valuation. It is not about uh, you know just getting things done. It's it's just not in technical world. You know, there's some myth in India that you know uh, only technology can drive into entrepreneurship. Uh, I would say technology can also be an enabler, uh, but still you can be an entrepreneur uh, through and through. So that's, uh, you know, what, what I'm looking at uh, with currently, and I, I tell entrepreneurs all across India, uh, you know, why we kind of uh, want to be, get into entrepreneurship. Right, so maybe today you could be the inspiration for many people. Mr. Singh, please tell me, there's one question that came my way. What is the biggest challenge for a startup? You're talking about startups here. What is, uh, sorry, can you come again? Your, your voice was what not audible. Is, the question that came along was, what is the biggest challenge for a startup today? See, uh, it is startups, is, a startup is all about challenges. Uh, it's, it's how the entrepreneur actually, uh, you know, overcomes come those challenges. Uh, in a regular startup, uh, the first challenge would be to set up a core team, uh, to get the right set of co-founders. Uh, and those co-founders come from somebody that Sorry, please mute. So, so those co-founders come from, uh, you know, from the, the regular walk of life, uh, somebody that you've known, can actually, who have the same mindset as yours. The second challenge then becomes is, you know, solving a problem which exists. The third challenge I would be, uh, you know, by hiring the right kind of team. Uh, so all these put together uh, are, are the first couple of challenges uh, that we face uh, as, as entrepreneurs or any startup would face. Uh, if the product is right, if the product market fit is right, uh, you, you know, there's a minimal viable product uh, available with you and it makes sense, uh, money, uh, funding automatically comes to you. So a lot more entrepreneurs uh, feel that funding is a challenge, uh, but they don't realize that if their product is, is actually hitting the right target, uh, the right audience, uh, it, it has a minimal viable product uh, appeal, uh, then funding is not a challenge. Actually, that was my very next question. Please lead us on the path of uh, funding for startups. You know, what do you do? How do you do? How difficult is it? What is it? How so do it is you not, it? it is not really difficult. Uh, there are various angel groups uh, in this country uh, there are uh, various incubators in, in this country. There are various uh, accelerators in, these country, uh, in this country. They are already set up. I mean, when I started entrepreneurship, you know, most of them didn't even exist. Uh, so, you know, we, we didn't have that kind of spot. But today, if, you know, students or anybody who's looking to get into entrepreneurship, uh, uh, it, you know, they just, they just have a Google uh, as to you know, what accelerators, incubators, uh, angel networks are around them and they can, you know, probably approach them for funding. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the minimum viable product has to be right and it has to have a right fit uh, for the market. Right. Well said. Well said. There's another question that's come up. Uh, it's, it's about valuation. It's about, you know, the new entrepreneurs that are chasing this, this number, the valuation. 
could you just throw in a little bit of light about what valuation is and what happens? What is it all about? And how does it affect a startup? See, Adi, um, uh, I'm of the belief that uh, valuation entrepreneurs should not chase valuation. Valuations should chase the entrepreneur. Um, so when I say that, uh, you know, I, I see if you're doing the right business, if you're profitable, if you concentrate in the right manner, uh, you know, valuations would definitely chase you. Uh, it shouldn't be the other way around. At the end of the day, I mean, you know, it is still startup or entrepreneurship. It's nothing but a innovation from business. So if you see how businesses were done uh, way back in the day, it always used to make sense. If, you, if somebody's invested uh, a rupee in the morning, would expect at least two rupees by evening or maybe the next day uh, to reap benefits. So if, it, if your business is not making uh, money in, in about a thousand days, as they say in the old days, then I think it's, you, you're not in the right business. So there's a saying, uh, which, which I think it's a Gujarati saying that one of my investors at one point of time told me was that you should run your company for 999 days. If it doesn't make money on, on the 1000th day, you shut it down and move on. So I think that's the core value, the core value. And you know, the, those are the kind of learnings that we've seen a successful people have uh, and I, I and I and I kind of agree with that because you know um, entrepreneurs usually tend to hold on to one idea uh, even if it's not working out for them uh, they're not ready to let go of the idea they are kind of wasting time you know figuring stuff out I think if the, the idea is not properly validated they should you know just kill it basically not accepting failure Yes, basically not accepting failure. And this is something that, you know, is very interesting because, uh, you know, one of my mentors back in Silicon Valley once told me that, uh, you know, entrepreneurs do not fail, businesses do. So, uh, and, and, and that has a really deep meaning into it because, you know, the, the fire in you as an entrepreneur should not affect you to not do another business or get into another idea. When I, I, I got into entrepreneurship, um, I was working in the U.S. for the longest time, and the, in the U.S. and the Indian market behaved very different. So I had two failed startups. Uh, I had two failed uh, and, you know, ventures uh, before I got successful. Uh, but I, you know, I picked myself up, uh, dusted, uh, learned from those mistakes, moved on, and corrected myself you know, in the next venture. So for, for some extent, I think, you know, for me, that experience helped. But uh, like I mentioned, Nazneen, these days, I mean, the kids are really, really fortunate enough that we have a proper a startup ecosystem or an entrepreneurial ecosystem in the country where these, you know, incubators, accelerators kind of handhold you. Um, there are mentors on board who are ready to, you know, help you out uh, and so on and so forth. So I, I don't see that as a challenge anymore. But from a personal standpoint, yes, entrepreneurship is tough. Entrepreneurship uh, is all about super highs and super lows. Uh, I mean, till date, I, I feel that uh, one day in the morning I wake up and I say, that, you know, I just tell myself that I'm, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. Uh, this is the right venture and it's going to be a great day. And the next day I would say that, you know, shit, I don't want to get into it. Uh, let me just get out of this business. So it's all about various highs and lows, and you know one needs to balance that highs and lows, uh, you know, practically with uh, with time. They have to learn to do that. Accepting failures is is a, I think the biggest challenge uh, across the globe um, for for people. Whether you know when I say entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs could not be just be into business. I mean you know. Uh, we saw what happened with, uh, unfortunately, what happened with, you know, the actors, uh, we, we've seen other examples. I mean, he himself in his field was an entrepreneur. Uh, he was creative. He was doing something innovative. But the acceptance of failure drove him to what he did. And, and that is unacceptable. So I think there is a, a certain standpoint where, where parents also come in. 
and uh, you know they should not just be explaining uh, about uh, success to their children but also you know you know explain about failures because uh, you know life has both of them uh, it's a equilibrium that's what i feel uh, you will fail at some you will succeed at some but ultimately if you can accept failures and pick yourself dust yourself up and keep moving on uh, it definitely would make sense uh, that is a beautiful piece of advice mr singh beautiful piece of advice so um, coming to the next question tell me what does the future of startup look after covid 19 so uh, it looks very bright um, nazneen is not just about covid uh, we are also headed for a global recession uh, the last time we headed for a global recession was in 2007 2008 uh if you actually see the stats started sticks uh you know great companies came out from that billions you know several billion dollar companies came out of that depression stage just to name a few uber was one of them uh that was a model that actually came out of from the last uh, economic slowdown that happened airbnb was again another model uh that 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 became a mammoth uh, in in uh, the entire globe right uh and even other you know certain aspects where you know google has come out with a lot of products using that uh data statistics in mind uh you know gmail has suddenly grown to be the favorite email for enterprise as well as for you know regular people uh which in 2007 2008 it is mostly hotmail and there was aol and there was you know other aspects so great ideas are born uh, through and through uh, during these times i think one just needs to look at uh, what the, what is the gap in the market uh, what problem can they solve because entrepreneurship is all about solving problems uh, and uh, the moment you get to know about that and you start building a solution around it all right now that was very very informative So uh, in today's audience, we have a mixed bag of people, right? From okay. students up to you know very passionate entrepreneurs who've been wanting to ask you questions, to seasoned entrepreneurs who are already you know there where they have to be. So I I I need a piece of advice from you for both these categories, for the young passionate entrepreneurs and for the people who have gone or who have started this journey. A piece of advice for both these categories. I think my my only piece of advice is that uh, you know whether you're a successful entrepreneur or you're not, but uh, one should just keep in mind that entrepreneurs do not fail and businesses do. So uh, and 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 that's something I want to give out as a takeaway for everybody, um, because you know today is a good time uh, or or tomorrow may be a bad time. Uh, everybody is talking about COVID as a situation and economically. there's a slow down i see it as uh, a positive outlook for my business uh, and i'm trying to inculcate the positive out of this situation currently uh, that's what i tell my clients that's what i tell my investors uh, that's what i tell my employees uh, and my partner as well so at the end of the day you need to stay positive and look at it every aspect from a positive aspect great piece of advice and i'm sure they're going to go back much learned and enriched uh thank you mr singh we have 10 minutes and we have kept these 10 minutes for you know a chat session a question answer session so anyone who wants to ask questions i already see one coming in so can financial services be a profitable business so this is your 10 minute of question answers the audience who would like to ask question please unmute ask your question and mute again mr singh there's a question that's already come in the chat Yes, financial services definitely is uh, can be profitable, and it is the right time to launch because everything is going cashless. Uh, everything is going, uh, you know, peer to peer. Uh, from a technology perspective, I I feel this is the right time if you can, you know, get payments to be made, uh, you know, peer to peer. It, it's it's a fantastic move. but also look at you know within the financial services you got to figure out your curve because it's a overcrowded market uh we already have many companies solving a lot of problems so figure out a way where you can solve a problem and what problem you can solve 
uh, and definitely it is uh, the, the the going so-called the buzzword, uh, you know, in the startup world right now. I have another question that's come in. It says, "Does crowdfunding help startups?" That's what it says. Does crowdfunding? Can we do crowdfunding for startups, basically? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, we you can do crowdfunding for for, for startups, but uh, again, uh, uh, you know, the stats show across the globe that crowdfunding has only worked for product related startups. So, if you have a a, a great product idea, uh, something that you can, uh, you know, get into production and it's great design, and you can present it well uh, to people, definitely it is. Uh, uh, you know, possible. Another question come up. What is facilitators and who are the best ones to approach? What sort of facilitators are we talking about? I mean, you know, can, can you ask these guys to talk to me? Okay. No, it's come up on my, uh, my device, the other device. So they're not on this chat. Okay. Facilitators. So, so there is, uh, like I said, there is, uh, in this country, there are various incubators, accelerators, um, you know, um, angel networks across uh, wherever you are. One of the most prominent angel networks and incubators in angel network. Uh, look them up online. Uh, they are probably pan-India. Uh, I'm sure there are waiters and accelerators in your region in Pune, uh, so you can look look around for you know the most proximity ones. Uh, but the most popular one in the country is called the Indian Indian Engine Network. All right. Uh, I don't see any other questions. I don't see any questions in the chat. Would anyone like to ask Mr. Singh a question? We have five minutes of his time, please. It's very precious time. He's all the. He's talking to us from Delhi. So I guess no questions. For all those young, passionate uh, students out there, would you like to ask uh, anything? Maybe share your dream, your aspirations with him. No, I guess the students aren't interested, Mr. Singh. But I'm surely going to get back to you with my aspirations and dreams. And ask you to be my mentor when I do wish when I do start my uh, enterprise. So, what type of business do you run? That's so another question. I am into uh, real estate, um, and uh, I'm I'm into asset management. And what I'm bringing about a difference is we I'm trying to re-innovate asset management from a 2020 standpoint. Um, bring in a lot of technology, uh, you know, merge real estate and technology together and create products out of it. Uh, that's the business that I'm in currently. Previously, I've handled a, a large uh, co-working venture, uh, which I took an exit earlier this year. Uh, it was by the name of GoWork. Uh, we, were, we had about a million square feet uh, of, of campuses here in uh, Delhi NCR. Uh, with great brands uh, coming on board, uh, so that's where I also had a couple of technology companies uh, that I'm a part of currently. Uh, one of them is called Edith Pro. Um, you guys go and check it out. It's basically a, an online tool to assess uh, engineers and get them uh, to meet for uh, the right job. Uh, with with the large companies there, so uh, check it out. Uh, Edith Pro is one of them, um, and then that I have a certain other small interest in various companies. I think there's another question in the chat box. It says, "What is Angel Networking?" So Angel Network uh, is basically people coming together and pooling in funds to fund startups. Uh, it's people like you and me. Hello?
Thank you, sir. There's a connectivity problem. Nazneen, ma'am, I can't find her in the list. Could be. So, it's the secondary coordinator here, sir. Uh, sure. In case students, yeah. I guess Nazneen, ma'am, has got some internet connectivity problem. I can't find her in the list anymore. Could be. Sure, no problem. Yeah. So, uh, students, in case you have any more questions to share, kindly uh, raise your questions in the chat box. Or if you feel like asking it, you can unmute and ask yourself. Hello. Hello. Hi, Nazim. Apologies. Apologies. I have a lot of network issues. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. No problem. Is there anything I missed? Well, I think there was a pretty much uh, quite a bit of silence. Oh, that's really <laughs> sad. <laughs> All right. Mr. Singh, we are at 5.30 now. Thank you so much for your time. We stick to our time and are very punctual about things. So we bid you adieu. Thank you so much for uh, you know, starting the series. Such a Thank pleasure you. having you. All the best for Thank your you. series. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Good evening. Bye-bye.